so grateful for Ezekiel's music and uh, for his opening our service of worship this day and uh, that's always something that uh, I most enjoy is this instrumental music that we have um, before the service and during communion and we are thankful for Ezekiel but uh, this day is a special day in that we are um, hosting our annual Christmas cantata and so I want to thank David McNeil and Marky Jones and all the members of the choir for putting together our special Christmas cantata. This year it's virtual and online. So that's going to be the, the feature of this service of worship this day. Uh, we're starting off in a normal way and then we'll, we will present this uh, choir cantata uh, in lieu of our message this day. So this is a special day, the fourth Sunday of Advent. So great to see everyone and we can worship here together even virtually and online and we're going to get started this morning. Uh, we will have communion at the end of our service and a children's message but um, this will be a different service and that we have this special 
presentation from the choir. So uh, let's get started. And uh, Nikki, would you like to lead us in a word of prayer as we begin? Sure. Let us join our hearts and our minds together for prayer across the miles. Most loving and gracious God, we come to you giving you thanks for this beautiful Sunday morning, for this fourth Sunday of Advent. Oh God, we come into this space waiting and excited for the Christmas morning yet to come. God, we thank you for the time together. We thank you for calling us by name. We thank you for all the blessings you have brought into our world. God, we ask that you remove those things that weigh so heavy on our hearts and minds. Remove our burdens and our worries. Remove our resentments and our grief, oh God. Hold it and bless it and help us to see the blessing within it. God, we thank you for this season and we thank you for this opportunity to once again sing your praises and to hear your word anew. Open our eyes and open our minds. Oh God, stir your spirit in our life. May all we do say, sing, and, and think be pleasing unto you, O God. Amen. Amen. And uh, let's see, now we're going to start off with a, a hymn. And um, this is the, the season, the fourth Sunday of Advent. And uh, we like to start to sing some uh, Christmas carols around this time. And this is one of our favorites. So uh, please do join. I've asked my kids to be careful of the, the flames here <laughs> on this Sunday. So um, let's please do join together. We're going to sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. O Come All Ye Faithful, Joyful and Triumphant, O Come Ye, O Come Ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold Next, we light the candle of peace. Next, we light the candle of joy. And today, we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. Now Eden's going to have a prayer. We have the four candles lit. Now Eden, uh, have our prayer for us today. Now let us pray. Pray. God of hope, Prince of peace, author of joy, and Lord of love. Your goodness and mercy is beyond our imagining. imagining. Teach us to love each other and all people, even as you love us and your Son. Jesus Christ, God of promise, 
cause of hope into the darkness to come. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to sing our Advent song. So kids, uh, gather around and we're going to sing Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Today. And I brought something that nece doesn't necessarily say love on it, but what is this that I brought? A present. It's a present, right? Is it wrapped all sparkly and glittery with bows and, and ribbon and glitter? Is it wrapped all fancy and pretty? No. No. How's it wrapped? It's wrapped with brown paper from a tube that you got from one of the old mm -hmm. papers. Yeah, it's wrapped in brown paper, right? It's just a present wrapped in brown paper. If it was under the tree with a bunch of sparkly bows and ribbons, would this be the first present you grabbed? Or do you think you'd grab a fancier wrapped present first? Fancier. Fancier, right. A lot of times when we start thinking about Christmas, when we think about getting ready for Christmas, we think, how are we going to give the best present? Or how are we going to make our present be the most special, the one everyone will want to open? But I want to remind us that Inside of this, this present, do you know as, as wonderful as this present is, and we can't open it, that would give away the surprise, but as wonderful as what's inside this present, do you know what? This is not the greatest present we've ever been given. No matter if this is the one thing on your Christmas list you wanted more than anything in the world, and I gave it to you, it would still not be the greatest present you've ever got. And I wrap this present in this brown bag to remind, in this brown paper to remind us that the greatest present we ever got, the greatest gift ever, it, that present was baby Jesus. And that present came in a simple little stable. There was no room in the inn, right? And it was dirty and there were animals around and it wasn't a fancy hospital. It wasn't a fancy labor and delivery room. It wasn't in a fancy hotel that was made for King on the penthouse suite. No, the baby came in a manger, a simple gift. It seemed simple enough, right? Wrapped in simple brown paper, born in a simple little manger. And yet we know that that baby, the one we've been waiting on, the one we're still waiting on, we have five more days to wait till Friday. We know that that baby is the greatest gift, the greatest gift we could ever be given because baby Jesus comes in love. God and Jesus Christ comes to love all the world, to say everyone is welcome and I've come to save everyone. So this baby that's coming on Christmas that we've been waiting on, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, this baby, this baby is love. This baby is God's love in the world to show us and to teach us and to remind us how to go and be love to others. So this fourth Sunday of Advent, as we wait for Christmas, as we wait for that Christmas morning, let us remember that what we're really waiting on is that greatest love that greatest gift will ever be given. And it comes as a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. We're also waiting for presents. Yes, the greatest present is baby Jesus. So let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to continue to wait and to prepare and to be patient. Oh God, we wait on this baby coming on Christmas day. And God, we know that this baby is love. And we thank you for all the love you bring into our lives. The love of our family, the love of our friends, the love of our church, and God, most importantly, your love, your grace, your forgiveness. God, we thank you for your love. 
And we thank you for the love these children gathered here and around the world bring into our lives and the lives of so many. Continue to bless us and call us, O God. Amen. Thank you, Eden. And thank you guys for joining us. Thanks, Eden. And we're also grateful this morning the, the children had a, um, a, a pageant. We had our, our annual Christmas pageant. And uh, thanks to, to Courtney and everybody who's helped and all the children. But that was this morning at, at 9 a.m. And um, uh, we'll be able to check that out if you didn't see it. Um, hopefully you'll be able to check that out online. But uh, we've come now to the time where we lift up our prayer concerns. And um, we are not going to, to make a lot of um, a lot of mention of prayer concerns today because we do have this special presentation from the choir, the choir cantata. But we do want you to know that we lift up your concerns and we we hold you in our prayers and in our hearts, and especially those who are grieving a loss this season, especially those that are alone during this difficult um, season of the year. And just know that our hearts go out to you and, and we keep you in our prayers. But we have now a very special presentation, the annual Choir's Christmas Cantata, and this is directed by David McNeil. But this year, for the first time, this is entirely virtual and online. And so this is our special message for you today on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Welcome, and thank you for joining us for Central Christian's 2020 Christmas Cantata. My name is David McNeil, and it's my privilege to be the choir director at Central Christian. Like so much of the rest of this past year, our cantata will look a little different than normal. The choir has spent many weeks now in preparing the music and the meditations we'll hear today. While we wish we could all be together in our sanctuary, we are grateful that the Lord has provided this opportunity to celebrate the birth of Christ in a novel way. Jesus Christ, who took on flesh for us on that first Christmas, is Lord of 2020. Nothing can stop his love for us. We pray that you will feel his love for you today, even as we sing about the baby born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. Merry Christmas from everyone at Central Christian Church. The prophet Isaiah tells us, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. I don't know about you, but I think 2020 has been the darkest year that I can remember. We had the COVID-19 pandemic, which meant stay at home orders, business closings, friends losing their jobs, way too many people dying demonstrations for justice this summer, accompanied by civil unrest and riots, a fractious election season, record hurricanes in the Atlantic, record wildfires here in Colorado and throughout the Western US. And did I mention the pandemic? It limited us from even seeing our friends and family in person, let alone sharing the comfort of a simple hug to help them cope with their loneliness and isolation. So while we've all experienced great darkness this year, it's also important to remember the other half of the verse. The people living dar in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Isaiah reminds us that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Even in the midst of all this darkness, God is getting ready to give us his most precious gift. So take comfort as we remember there is a great light coming, the birth of our Savior.
hard to believe. I mean, we all have experienced the darkness around us. Loneliness and social isolation. I mean, so many of us are struggling with financial worries and where our hearts are overwhelmed with grief. We miss our loved ones. We miss the traditions of this season. We miss gathering for symphonies and for singing Christmas carols and we miss lighting candles with one another and and being and looking and smiling and laughing together. Oh, but the darkness, the darkness, it feels so heavy and sometimes it feels like it's just all there is and yet we know, we know the light is coming. John 1, 9 tells us the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world and, and it's coming. Can you see it? Can you see it? Look around. Look into the eyes of those you meet. Look out into God's creation. Look into your heart. Do you see the light? For the light, the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace, the king of kings, that babe born in a manger so many years ago is coming. The light will break through the darkness. Our job is to wait, to watch, to look, and to prepare so when the light comes, when the baby's born, we're ready. So look, listen, the light is coming. Praise God and hallelujah, the Prince of Peace, almighty God, light in the darkness for all. Amen. People of this the time is near of the growing of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Drink the hearth and set the table.
Have you looked east lately? From my east windows, I can see the rising sun to light the day and the moon rising to light the night. Did you know that the November full moon is called the beaver moon? It is said that this is when the beavers prepare their lodges for the coming winter. Just as the beavers prepare for the winter, we prepare for the ending of the old year and the beginning of a new. We usually think of winter as a time of darkness and endings. The days are shorter and the nights are longer. The old year is dying. But consider this. As the old year dies, a new year is born. Winter heralds the spring to come, a time of new beginnings. The days become longer. The sun rises earlier and sets later. The cold moon of December comes and goes. In John chapter 1, verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and beauty. Just as the sun rises and heralds a new day full of promises, so the Son of God is always with us, full of grace and beauty. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Canarius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, 
keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I will bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born unto you, and he is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you that you will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who send creation's story, now proclaim the Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, Watching o'er your flocks by night, God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant's light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, sleep your contemplations, brighter visions mean Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen the natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar ending, watching long in hope and fear, suddenly Amen. We have come now to the final scripture of our choral presentation for this Advent season. And our last lesson is from the book of Revelation in chapter 21, the, the famous passage beginning in verse 3, where the scripture says, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with humankind, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Thanks be to God. And this is the, the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the light that we have been waiting to come into the world. And throughout this journey through scripture and song, uh, we started with the lesson that, that Margie read that said, the people who walk in darkness shall, shall see a great light. And then through this season of Advent, we have shared more and more scriptures and through this presentation where we see that light breaking into the world. Until finally we have this scripture that says, see the dwelling place of God is with humankind. And there will be a day where all of the pain, all of the sorrow will have passed away and we can trust that the promises will be fulfilled. This is the good news and this is the journey that we walk through Advent each and every year, beginning with the darkness and moving into the light. 
In fact, if it was not for the darkness, would we be able to see the light? And if it was not for the darkness, the, the light of a candle, for example, would have no place to shine. So that's been my experience. I think my experience, in fact, through this whole past many months of this pandemic of the coronavirus um, that we have dealt with and that, is, that has so changed our, our patterns and, and so changed um, our routines, what I have learned above all else is not to take these things for granted. When we're not able to see each other, when we're not able to, to worship in our sanctuary, then the next time that we are able to see each other, the next time we are able to worship in the sanctuary, then I won't be taking that for granted. I can appreciate that that much more. It's a gift, just like the light that God brings into the world is a gift. If it was not for the darkness, how could we recognize the light? And the good news is that these promises are, are trustworthy and true. The good news is that this is the hope and, and the promise that we share in Jesus Christ, that there will be a day where all of these burdens, all of these, these trials will pass away and it will be all light and love and peace. This is the promise of our God. Indeed, that this world is not our home, that we are just a passing through and that these very trials and tribulations and circumstances can be for us a crucible, can be for us a, a chance for us to become the people that God is calling us to be. The scripture teaches that God will not give us more than we can handle. And so all of these uh, trials have given us a chance to persevere, to learn, to listen for how God is, is moving in this world. And we have walked through these songs and, and these scriptures and this presentation from the choir to remind us that all is not lost, that even when things seem dark, it's always darkest before the dawn. And so we repeat this pattern each and every year, and we walk in that journey from darkness into the light, the light that is coming into the world, which is Jesus Christ. But this is not only about that baby that was born so long ago in a manger in Bethlehem. The season of Advent is for us to anticipate the hope that is to come, the, the future hope that we have of all of the, the pain and all of the sorrow and all of the tears finally passing away. And we get to the place, to uh, that good land that God has promised to us. This is the promise of our faith, and this is the hope of our baptism and the hope that we share in Jesus Christ. And I am so grateful that we have the opportunity to tell the story yet again this year, even in the virtual space. Because the church is not a building, but a people. And even if our buildings are closed, even if we're not able to be in the sanctuary, the church still continues. In fact, perhaps we can even better share the message of hope if we are not um, in our patterns and our routines, if we can take a step back and we don't take these things for granted, then perhaps this message is even more precious to us and we can even better recognize the light when we have journeyed through the darkness. This is my prayer for each and every one that we can see this light, that we can learn to trust in the God that is greater than ourselves, that we can learn to trust that God is going to get us where God needs us to go. And God would not have brought us this far just to leave us in the lurch. And so let us trust that even when things seem dark, that God is using these very circumstances to help us to see where God is, is active and, and working in this world. That sometimes it takes a dark period in order for us to not take things for granted and to recognize where the light is inbreaking in so many different ways. Do we trust? Can we trust that God is going to get us where we need to go? Can we trust indeed that, that even these very circumstances that God is, is in control, that, that God holds us in God's hands, and that we can trust in the promises that they are trustworthy and true. This is the promise of our faith in Jesus Christ, that there will be a day when all of our dreams will be fulfilled. I pray that we can trust in these promises, and I do want to give thanks to David McNeil and to Margie Jones and to everybody who helped 
to make this presentation possible. And um, I, I do pray that we can feel connected and we can feel like we are part of a common purpose as we continue in this journey of Advent. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And thanks so much for the special presentation from the choir and all those who worked so hard to make this happen today, and especially to David McNeil and Margie Jones for her efforts at coordination. And aren't we blessed that we can be a part of something like this? And it's not too late if you'd like to be a part of the work of the choir and their anthems. Um, reach out to David or to the church, and we'd love to get you involved. It's a great fellowship. And so thank you all so very much. And we've come now to the main event where we are going to share communion as Jesus has commanded us to do. And we are so grateful. We are so blessed that God did not leave us um, to do this alone, but God has given us the Holy Spirit to give us our strength and to give us courage to face the day and to face the days that are to come. So every time we gather here at this table, every time we come together, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. So we are here and we are remembering that great gift, the, the gift of the baby Jesus, as Nikki said, the greatest gift was the gift of love that came at Christmas. And this is our hope. This is our peace. This is our joy. The love for God is love. That's what the scripture says. So let's join together and, and share in this communion meal the, the celebration of God's love for us. Uh, in this Christmas time. Let's join together. And we do remember that it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed. The scripture teaches that he was gathered there in the upper room with his disciples. And the scripture tells us how he first, he took the bread. 
And it says that he blessed it and that he broke it and that he gave it. And he said, this is my body. It's broken for you. Take and eat. Then the scripture teaches how it was after supper that Jesus took the cup and he shared it with his disciples and he said to them, this is the, the cup of the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Take this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God this day and always. Amen. Amen. And now I'll say to you, Nikki, this is the body of Christ broken for you. The cup of new life, Christ's blood shed for you. Cain, this is the body of Christ broken for you, and the cup of love poured out for you. Eden, this is the body of Christ broken for you, and the cup of love poured out for you. Amen. And of course, this is true. This promise is trustworthy and true for each and every one. The body of Christ, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, Christ's blood shed for us. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. And amen. And we've had a special service of, of worship today. And I again, we give thanks for the choir and for their special presentation and message that they give us in song. And a lot for us to look forward to. Um, we're looking towards uh, Christmas Eve and a special candlelight service that we have also online this year that's at 7 p.m on christmas eve and a lot of special music ezekiel's working on some special pieces christine is is working on some special music pieces so so much for us to look forward to in this season check out the truth website we're having a fellowship tonight a family fellowship where we're sharing uh, christmas ornaments a lot that we're doing and so let's see how we can get connected give us a call if there's something that you need and know that we pray for you and now we're going to go out with one of our favorite Christmas carols, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So let's go. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Christmas Eve, and even beyond, you know, the, the Sunday after Christmas, we, we continue to, to celebrate Christmas. So let us be in the spirit of the season and even in these uh, uh, different days. And, and please know that our hearts go out to you and we keep you in our prayers. And again, thanks to the choir for this uh, beautiful presentation. Thanks to the, the children's program for the beautiful presentation we enjoy today. 
So much to look forward to. Let's go out now with the benediction. And now may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all through Jesus Christ, our Lord, this day and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.